Hey guys, uh, welcome. This is uh, Infrastructure Track. Um, Sean Moyer and Nathan Keltner are going to talk about we're driving, we're driving the smart grid. Hey. So actually, um, actually, we were working on that initially, and um, we got a little behind, and so uh, we actually just created a hot chick profile. Um, <laughs> we friended a bunch of people. That was kind of what we ended up doing instead. So, anyways, <laughs> so, you know, we should probably close that. There we go. Cool. All right. So, uh, I'm Nathan Keltner. Uh, I'm on the security assessments team with Sean for Fishnet Security. Uh, we do um, penetration testing, vulnerability assessments, stuff like that for our day job. Um, we had the opportunity to look at a lot of interesting smart grid infrastructure uh, for part of a, a long term engagement um, earlier this year. And uh, it got us all talking about this and thinking about this and kind of resulted in this talk. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Nathan's, uh, our, both of our qualifications for this were, um, and you, you know, I, I always tend to do this to a fault, but um, basically one of our sales guys uh, told us that he had sold a really big wireless assessment. And, um, you know, we started talking to him and said, well, what are we, you know, what are we assessing? And he goes, well, it's about 3,000 um, IPs. Devices, three, yeah. like 3,000 IPs. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, that's cool. We've, yeah, we've done bigger, you know, network pens than that. No big deal. Um, but yeah, I think they're all over Wi-Fi. Okay, okay, yeah, no, we can, we can, work. that's a really big wireless network. Like, a lot of collisions and stuff with, you know, that much traffic in there. And um, so, uh, so <laughs> we get to the kickoff with the client and start talking about it. And the, uh, the client goes and shows us a bank of meters and says, no, no, it's, it's this stuff over here. Um, isn't that Wi-Fi? Is that Wi-Fi? Right? That's what we thought it was. And so uh, <laughs> we spent a lot of time uh, kind of figuring that out. And uh, yeah, Nathan obtained a yellow mm, belt yeah. in GNU Radio. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm uh, Sean Moyer, a principal consultant with uh, Fishnet's assessment team. Yep, pen tester by trade. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, I, I actually worked at a, a, a VCR repair shop as my part-time job in college, and I'm kind of okay with the solder gun. I'm also remarkably resistant to sustained 110 <laughs> volt burst. We've, nice. we've confirmed that uh, Several <laughs> beyond times. a shadow of a doubt in trying to uh, do things like sniff live meters and open the cases and mess with them and stuff like that. So, so yeah, the. General, the general kind of overall topic that we're really on about here is a smart grid and utility radio, and also kind of dumb grid radio as well. So a lot of the things that we're talking about are also in use in places where it's not necessarily smart grid per se. So talking um, all of the wireless stuff that hooks all these different pieces together. Um, all of the new uh, advanced things that are coming out, the easiest way in general to lay that out uh, with little infrastructure uh, requirements all take place in the air around us. Yeah, and, and actually not just uh, in, to, you know, I've talked to uh, people in other utilities, you know, gas and water and things like that, where they're still looking at, at a lot of these same kind of technologies, you know, to, uh, to collect data and manage information um, for, you know, all of their distribution points too. So all of this stuff is still kind of applicable there as well. Um, they've been a lot slower to adopt, so you know, obviously the electrical utilities are where a lot of this is going on you know, pretty quickly right now. Um, and a lot of that is driven, um, as some people probably know, by the, uh, the stimulus funds uh, that have been issued to a number of utilities. Um, the, uh, the stimulus money actually from uh, part, of the, part of the funds for the, the overall stimulus plan were, were set aside for quote unquote green energy and smart grid. And uh, those are all earmarked uh, that they have a, a, essentially a shelf life of two years. And so you have utilities that maybe had 1,500 you know, pilot uh, smart grid meters sitting around that now all of a sudden are going, oh crap, let's wire the entire state, right? And let's hurry up and do it before we run out of funds. And so, so yeah, some, some open so yeah, standards. Yeah, yeah, some, some open standards. Um, there's some of this that, that is available uh, in like ANSI documentation um, or otherwise just kind of openly documented and we have access to it. And then there's a fair amount of stuff that happens under the hood. Um, it'll often be referred to by them literally as like their secret sauce. And it's the kind of thing that um, 
that you just don't know about until you start digging into. I'm sorry, that's patented trade secret information, and we can't actually go into details about the. <laughs> that's 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 the standard answer if you're uh, if you call up a vendor and ask them about some of this stuff. So, uh, so yeah, it, to Nathan's point earlier, it's with the rap rapid adoption, the fastest route to go tends to be to, to start throwing things together wireless. Um, Actually, kind of an inter interesting analogy there is uh, um, Africa in, in terms of cellular service. So in the United States, all of our cellular infrastructure is still a lot of that is like wired under the hood. So we have all of this wired infrastructure. Africa actually leapfrogged a lot of that because they were a late adopter. And so they moved you know, to setting all this stuff up via wireless right away. And that's kind of what the utilities are doing. So they may have some of these things that are some control pieces or some monitoring component that's that's on some kind of wired network now. But when you want to turn up a, a very large infrastructure very quickly before you run out of money, then uh, you know wireless is probably the fastest path to go. Right. So, so yeah. So like Sean said, rapid adoption. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, yeah, minimal minimal level of infrastructure that's required um, to get things up and moving. Yeah. So there's not not necessarily anything wrong with that approach. Um, as we looked at a lot of this, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, sort of noise in this industry right now, um, specifically in this particular topic. And um, there's nothing inherently bad about these, these particular types of approaches. Um, the, the wireless tech that we saw overall uh, runs the entire gamut from you know, awful to, to great. And uh, there's nothing inherently bad about it, but just given the level of complexity, the newness of the vendors, the newness of the tech, there's certainly a lot of room for fail. Yeah, and for, for what it's worth, a lot of these things, we're seeing actually a, a lot of vendors in this space that specialize in co-sourcing this stuff. So uh, vendors will actually come in and, and sort of run the whole rollout and run the deployment and run the infrastructure for the utilities and then hand it over to them you know, after the fact to, to manage. And that's, you know, there's, a, there's an entire market in the utility space that's just blowing up right now with coming in and, and running these, you know, these smart grid rollouts for the utilities that are pushing this stuff really fast. And the utilities don't necessarily know the right es the questions to ask. This isn't necessarily their, you know, their wheelhouse. Um, and so you're going from you know, maybe some limited pilot rollout to citywide, statewide infrastructure all over wireless. And, and they don't necessarily know the right questions to ask. Um, in, in particular, uh, to um, James Arlen's uh, points in, in his talk earlier, you know, we kind of, we have the folks that understand this data end and understand the backside and how those pieces work and have been in that industry for lots and lots of years and get how all those pieces work. And then we have things like wireless where those, the kinds of questions that you should be asking there really are not that different from what you would be asking about how somebody set up, you know, 802.11n and WPA2, and, and how do you handle you know, certs and, and authentication for a network like that? With the, the big giant difference being that uh, in those cases, there are gigantic open standards that this industry is beat to death over a long period of time, as opposed to something that was you know, rapidly developed, um, maybe in somebody's spare time or in their basement in a startup, <laughs> and uh, has not had anywhere near that same level of scrutiny. Right, and, and in fairness, that's not necessarily always the case. Right. Um, but yeah, you actually, if you go out and you read uh, vendor websites for this stuff, not, not just AMI and meters, but uh, you know, smart grid technology in general, they will actually use things like proprietary encryption as a selling point and describe that as, you know, this, is a, this is a great asset that we have, that we have this, this proprietary protocol and this proprietary encryption that um, you know, nobody has successfully broke it before. So who's looked at it? Well, you know, nobody. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, other, the other thing you'll commonly see is um, the, all, all of the, the key buzzwords that everybody's come to expect. So somebody will throw out the word AES, right? And then the people on the other end of it, they don't really know a whole lot about the details of how any of that stuff works because um, they've never had to do it as part of their job. Uh, they'll, they'll see that and go, oh, great, okay, so it's got solid crypto. And it's like, well, no, not, not necessarily at all because right, AES is one small component of an overall architecture that all has to work together and fit. And if it doesn't, then it's really no different than, yeah, proprietary ROT 13 or something. Right, and, and yeah, Tom Patrick has made the point a number of times that um, you know, most, of the, most of the time when you're looking at crypto or key management and things like that, it's not really about even finding a, a flaw in the crypto itself. It's in the implementation and the way it's been handled and the way it's, the way it's set up. And um, yeah, a, a lot of those pieces, 
the, the people that are making these product selections are not, they don't,